Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rukhach Radash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David, reborn again in this last generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yasharala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as the Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, I want to go ahead and touch upon the Arabs being Esau and how you could easily cut that. You see, a lot of these paid agents are being pushed again to push the whole Arab being Esau narrative. Now, if you're learned in the scriptures, you know that the Arabs do not fulfill the prophecies uh, which Esau fulfills. And one recent report, which I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to watch in a bit, we're going to watch right now, is going to prove that these Arabs are not a cunning hunter. They do not have the blessing of, of the sword or weaponry as Esau does, right? So let's go ahead and um, uh, get to the scripture. This is Genesis 25 and 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. Now again, a cunning hunter, right? This right here shows that Esau was going to be good with weaponry, right? That, that was uh, his, one of his spiritual markers uh, upon, that, upon that guy. Now let's go ahead and jump to his... Uh, to his uh, blessing. This is Genesis 27 and 40. And by the sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and shall come to, it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Now the key point here is by thy sword shalt thou live. Right? Now let's take a look at this this uh, news news posting. Uh, let me give you a synopsis of it. Now, one thing they're talking about right now is the recent debacle that happened uh, in the, the, the Strait of Hormuz, right there where, where Saudi Arabia and Iran is at, and that recent uh, Japanese oil tanker that got that was uh, that was bombed, and how the U.S. claimed it was Iran, but basically these they're just dismissing it. However, what they're talking about is how how America has been supplying Saudi Arabia the Arabs who biblically are known as the Ishmaelites they're not the Edomites but how Edom the so-called Caucasians have been supplying the the Arabs the Ishmaelites with vast amounts of weaponry to the point where uh, to to get around uh, the the bottleneck of waiting for America to deliver that Trump is thinking of even just selling them the capabilities uh, of making their own weapons, the Arabs that is. But this former Pentag Pentagon um, official says that this is that wouldn't work because one, uh, it would <clears throat> it would give Esau less control over the Arabs, and second, that these Arabs don't even know how to use all the weaponry that they are buying, the ones that they the weaponry that they do use. So again. With that being said, I don't know how you simple Israelites out there cannot see that the Caucasians are Esau. They live by the sword. They their number one commodity out of the U.S. is weaponry. They they conquer the world with their weaponry, and they sell their weaponry around the world, right? And that, again, that fulfills a whole other scripture. But I'm not going to get into that. Let me just let's watch this scripture. Let's watch this article real quick. We saw in John Huddy's report there, mm -hmm. we've learned today that the Trump administration is, is planning on getting around Congress entirely mm -hmm. by selling uh, of selling weapons by by just selling the capabilities. I mean, mm -hmm. direct through through Raytheon um, yeah. to teach them to make bombs themselves. I yeah. mean, uh, what sort of implications do you have here, given that the Saudis, like you said, want to destroy Iran? Well, it, it, this it's made it's it's meant to give them the the capability to make their own bombs. But we've seen that the bombs that they received are being used for purposes of killing civilians in uh, in Yemen. Yeah. We would have no control over over something like that should they be successful in making them. 
I mean, I, I question that, number right. one, their, their uh, capabilities in that regard because they, they've been fighting a war for seven years and they can't seem to win it. Right, right. And, and secondly, they have all this other equipment already that they don't know what, you know, they just store it. For, and secondly, they have all this other equipment already that they don't know what, you know, they just store it. For, you know, they just store it. For, they, and secondly, they have all this other equipment already that they don't know what, you know, they just store it for, because they don't know how to use it. Equipment already that they don't know what, you know, they just store it for, because they don't know how to use it. Equipment already that they don't know what, you know, they just store it for, because they don't know how to all this other equipment already that they don't know what, you know, they just store it for, because they don't know how to use it. So it, it we lose our leverage over how and That's enough of that. Use. That pretty much proved the point. So even this, this ex-Pentagon Pentagon official admitted that these Arabs don't know how to use these weapons that they're amassing over there, that America is selling. Now, again, if you're familiar with how the petrodollar works and if you familiarize yourself with the economics of America, Babylon the Great as it's known in the Bible, you understand that in the 70s, America made a deal with Saudi Arabia that they would give Saudi Arabia all the weaponry and defense that they needed as long as Saudi Arabia would sell all their oil in US dollars which would basically prop up the US dollar and hence America would prop up the Saudi the, the Saud family who then later took over that that entire region and and named that country after themselves the House of Saud or Saudi Arabia now the um, Let's go and read this. This is 2nd Ezra 9 and 20. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape of the cluster, and a plant of a great people. Let the multitude perish then, when, which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept, and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. Nevertheless, if that will cease yet seven days more, but thou shalt not fast in them. Now, in this right here, the point is, is that the devices, the peril that has come into the world because of the devices that have come into it and how this world has gone to crap for the most part because of these devices, but how the Lord has saved his grape of the cluster right and and of the plant and of a plant of a great people and what this means here is that the Lord let me go ahead and get this family tree image out here real quick it's lucky it's a little bit big and it takes a little while to open up but um this is what he, the Lord is referring to this is the great tree right this huge tree of humanity here right and down here this is the small grape of the entire cluster right because out of these people who come from the line of Shem not J not um, uh, Japhet or Ham right these are people on the other branches of this tree he hasn't kept these other uh, uh, grapes of this cluster he's kept this grape Jacob and all those who come uh, after him and stuff like that, man. And that's what the Bible is dealing with, man. That's why it's not because these people are bigger that this chart is, 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 is larger here. It's because these people are more important to the, uh, in, in the narrative of the Bible as these are the true Israelites of the Holy Bible. These would be in the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians. These are the people whose salvation has been promised to um, from the, from, uh, the promise that was given to our forefather Abraham or Abraham as his name was changed to which later was passed down to Isaac and which was then given to our forefather Jacob whose name was changed to Israel now that being said <clears throat> let's go into some other things which makes it blatantly clear that Esau Edom is the so-called Caucasian race because again let's take a look at this this article that's over four years old the 18 billion arms race helping to fuel the Middle East conflict. Right? Where's this all coming from, man? Security experts express fears for region stability amid record weapon sales from West and Russia from West and Russia's missile deals with Iran. Now, 
let's take a look at that. The West, right, who is basically America, and Russia, right? Well, those are two different peoples, Brother Yeshaya, aren't they? No. You see, the Russians and the Americans, they are both Edomites, but they come from a different different tribe of Edom, okay? Now, so these two people, the West and Russia, these are the Edomites. Now, who are they selling uh, weapons to? They're selling them to, uh, for the most part, to the Arabs, the United Arabs of Emirates, right? This is who Trump has been uh, been unloading these weapons to. And let's, let me go ahead and read this real quick. It says, the Middle, the Middle East is... Pl is plunging deeper into the, an arms race with an estimated 18 billion expected to be spent on weapons this year a development that experts warn is fueling serious tensions and conflict in the regions and that's because the lord is going to raise up the spirit of these devils to all meet up and go into the valley of jehoshaphat because that's where he's going to lure all the armies of the world so he could destroy them so it says the bible Given the unprecedented levels of weapon sales by the West, including the U.S., Canada, and U.K., all Edomites, to the mainly Sunni Gulf states, basically the Arabs, Vladimir Putin's decision last week to allow the controversial delivery of the S-300, and that's funny because now they got the S-400s, anti-aircraft missiles to Iran, voluntarily blocked by Russia since 2010, seems likely to accelerate the proliferation that will see a see agreed arms sales to the top five purchasers in the region saudi arabia the united arab emirates algeria egypt and iraq uh surge this year to more than 18 billion up to 12 billion last year among the systems i think now is even 24 billion is like what the what the recent year uh sales have done for them among the systems being purchased are jet fighters, missiles, armored vehicles, drones, and helicopters. The Russian declaration uh, came only two days before Iraq Prime Minister Hadir al-Abadi -Ab disclosed that he was seeking arms worth billions of dollars from Washington with payments deferred for the battle against Islamic State ISIS. Now it's funny because we all know that ISIS is pretty much backed by the U.S. and I got an article that's going to show that. Last week, France's foreign minister Laurent Fabius uh, disclosed progress in talks to sell Rafale fighters jets to the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, one of the Middle East's biggest, most aggressive arms buyers. States in the Middle East are now more prepared to use the weapons they are buying. That they are buying. You see, so this right here cuts all that. Uh, Esau are, is the arrows, man, because if Esau is the cunning hunter and lives by the sword, how is it that he is buying all his weaponry from the western Caucasian uh, countries, man? Right? How is it that France, the UK, uh, US, Canada, uh, and, and Russia is all the, the number one sellers to these Arab countries, man? Is because they are the biblical Edomites, and again, it's no, it's no uh, a secret. It tells you tracing ISIS weapon supplies chains back to the U.S. Right? And I ain't gonna read this whole thing, man. If you want, you go and find this article. But it pretty much tells you how they trace a lot of these weapons that ISIS is using back to the to uh, U.S. supplied uh, systems. Right? It even tells you here in this French article or, or foreignpolicy.com. Where does the Islamic State get its weapons? Many of the weapons the militant group fights with in Iraq and Syria came from the United States. Look at that, man. Right, but but the Caucasians—they're not the—they're—they're uh, they're not the Edomites, right, man? You guys are freaking nuts, man. Get out of here with that shit. This is Genesis 16 and 12, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. This right here is the prophecy of Ishmael, right? Where do all the Saudi Arabians or all the Arabs live right now, man? Uh, you, where, where do all the Arabs live? Let's let's look on the map, man. Let's go to maps. I'm going to tell you where they live, man. They live right over here. 
They live all right here. In this in this region right here. This is where all the Arabs all dwell, all with their brothers, man. Now where do the Caucasians live? Predominantly all over the globe. Right? Majority of America, Canada, uh, over here in Europe mostly and stuff, and over here in Russia, down here in Australia, South Africa, and I wouldn't doubt that they have some shit over in Antarctica either. You see? So again, that that scripture just doesn't line up, man, with with uh, with Ishmael, man. Ishmael is a wild man. <clears throat> doesn't tell you he's going to be a, 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 a going to have a blessing of a weapon. Let's get another uh, spiritual marker that tells you who the uh, wicked are going to be. Now let's go ahead and read this Isaiah 14 and 5. And Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushai, hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a, with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger. That ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. Now let's take a look at this, right? Who has continually been a, given a, a sore stroke to the world, right? And who has ruled the nations? Now have the Arabs? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look to see all the list of wars that involve Saudi Arabia, right? And this again, this is going to be just that they've involved, not that they won or that they started, right? Okay, let's take a look. They started in 1746. And okay, a good, good amount of wars, okay. About 10 per decade. Oh, this is a really busy decade. Okay. So there you go. Maybe about, at most, maybe 30. 30. I'm going to, I'm not going to count it, but I'm guessing like about 30, all right? That's not, and, you know, and that's being nice, right? Because I'm just going to include the ones here that the U.S. is involved in because we all know that uh, Saudi Arabia really didn't have shit to do with that other than provide space. Now, let's go and take a look at America's uh, involvements into war, right? List of wars involving the United States. Let's see, 1775, huh, the year before they uh, came together. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and scroll down. War with Gad. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. 19th century war with uh, Spanish-American wars. Okay. More more wars with Gad. Okay. Let's keep going. War with the Greeks. More war with Gad. The Netherlands. Uh, more war with Gad. Netherlands again. The British, the Ivory Coast, against Mexico. There you go, man. The uh, Spanish-American Wars. Let's see, Morgad. Let's see, who are these people? These are the, uh, oh, Morgad. More, yeah, more, more, more Gadites that he's fighting with, man. Look at this. Man, I'm still not even close to being down towards the bottom. Navajo Nation, in the 1800s. Let's see, abolitionist. Okay. So we've got. Look at this, man. More Gad. He's just messing Gad up. Okay. Let's just let's do a little faster. I'm going to be here all day. <clears throat> man, look at this. This continual, man. This is There's no break in this, in this, uh, in this list, it looks like. Germany. Spain, Japan, let's see here, 20th century's wars. Man, so that was only the eight, up until the 18th century wars. Now let's go to the 20th century war. There it goes. Man, look at this. Haitians, these are all wars for the most part against mostly the tribes. Here goes somebody else, Australia, Hungary, Bulgaria, World War One. Huh, okay. Russian Civil War, they were involved in that too. Last Indian uprising. There you go. Last last bit of Gad that stood up against the uh, the behemoth uh, Babylon the Great. Here goes World War Two, the Korean War, the Lo Lotian uh, War. People basically from Laos, Lebanese, Cuban, Bay of Pigs, the 
man, look at this. Vietnam War, the communist insurgency in Thailand, Korean com DMZ conflict, the Dominican Civil War, Bolivia, Cambodian, they are. I don't even know where the heck that is. So I'm guessing over there, like, I don't even know where the heck that's at. Lebanon, <clears throat> Grenada, Sidra, remember Libya, Libya, Iran, Libya, Panama, Iraq, and Iraq, Somali National Allegiance, Republic. Man, look at this. And we're still not even done, people. Look, we still. Still got a couple of bits. And now, 21st century, man. Look at this. Oh, look at this shit, man. All right. Let's just skip down to the bottom. This is all basically what we've all kind of lived through and still fresh in our brains. So there you go, man. Now, is, you tell me, man. What's a more continual stroke? Is it this, this roster here of the United States? Or is it this tiny little roster of the Arabs, man? Look at that, man. You people are freaking nuts if you think the uh, Arabs are, are, are Esau. Now, another, now this is the last spiritual marker I want to bring out. Let's take a look at how these Arabs manage their guns. Where's it, Bob? What's up? Where's it, Bob? You see, there's Ishmael there, man. Now, again, yeah, Ishmael does have guns, man, but look at this, man. This guy's just playing at it, man. This is just a hobby for him. Let's go and take a look at the people who have it in their blood, though. Look at this, man. Clip posted to her Twitter and Instagram, Jones approaches the little boy and starts with the standard questions. She asks him his name and how old he is, to which he responds by counting on his fingers. Then she hits him with this doozy. Show me what you did with your gun. Do it again. Maverick responds like a pro. Even though the rifle is mounted to a display case and doesn't have any ammunition, He's still able to lock and load the mechanism, and he places his finger right on the trigger. He continues to impress Kendall by showing her where the magazine is. Any... Right, but this isn't. But these Caucasians aren't Esau. Roberts. So, Akim, I hope this uh, lesson was edifying. I hope this makes it very clear how Ishmael, the Arabs, do not fulfill the prophecies or the spiritual markers which were set upon the, uh, the uh, nation of Edom and, and that explained and described how they would be in the latter days. So, with all that, I want to go ahead and give praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rukhak, Radash. Double honor to my teachers, the Apostle Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom. <laughs>